This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and you knew this one was coming. As promised, this is the comparison or a smackdown between the new Microsoft Surface Book right here and the Microsoft Surface Pro 4. Now, this one isn't so much a smackdown. I mean, Microsoft makes two different kind of products that have some similarities, so you can pick whichever one suits your needs best. So it's not to say that one is rip roariously better than the other. Of course, one costs a lot more than the other, that being the Surface Book, so we hope that there are some differentiators that are what we could call superior, and in fact, there are. But in the end, it's also going to come down to some important things like which size do you prefer? What can you afford? Because Surface Book is a lot more expensive. Anyway, we're going to check all that out now. So here we have Microsoft's two new products for the fall of 2015. This is Microsoft Surface Book. That's Microsoft Surface Pro 4. Now, Surface Pro 4 is a little bit less of a mystery because obviously it's the fourth generation of Microsoft's tablet that can be a laptop. Surface Book is an entirely new thing and took many of us by surprise because we never thought that Microsoft actually would go ahead and make a laptop but it too transforms into a tablet. But first off, let's talk about price because that's that's considerable here. Now, neither of these is inexpensive products. Certainly, Surface Pro 4 starts at $900. That's for the Intel Core M3, which is a fanless design. I put it in a slightly different bucket than probably the models that folks would be deciding between right here. So we're going to focus mostly on the Core i5 and the upcoming Core i7 version of Surface Pro 4 here. Now even that $900, you got to throw in the $130 for the type cover, so you're looking at $1,030. Not cheap. The Core i5 base model, 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD is $1,000. So that's $1,130 right there for your Surface Pro 4. Surface Book starts at $1,500, so even more expensive there. And if you want that optional dedicated GPU, you're looking at spending $1,900. So you're throwing a lot more money at the Surface Book, and we'll see if you think it's worth it to you. But for some people, that's going to be a deal breaker right there. You only have so much to spend, and this just may be out of your price range. It's, I'm sure, out of a lot of people's price range. Next is the design, and this is really important. Surface Pro 4 can be your laptop because it has a full Intel Core i5 or i7 CPU. It's got the same internals basically as your average 13-inch Ultrabook. So it's a powerful little guy. It can do a lot. But it is primarily a tablet first. The keyboard detaches, as you know by now. This little type cover is removable, available in lots of spiffy colors. And it's a 12.3-inch tablet once you take that off. That's what it is. That's, the ergonomics are very tablet-like. It's 1.73 pounds for the tablet only. So it's not as light as, obviously, a mobile OS tablet like a, a Galaxy Tab or something like that, but it's pretty light. Now, Surface Book, 13.5-inch display, total normal laptop ergonomics, at least at first blush. It's For those of you who want a laptop first and a detachable screen second, it would be the better choice if it's in your price range. You get an absolutely normal laptop keyboard. In fact, one of the better ones that we've used, a very good trackpad as well on board and the it works in your lap you can put it just like so and you know tilt it the way you want it doesn't tilt that far back but I find it sufficient all those different angles right there if most of the time you you just spend life in laptop land and that's what you need then probably this one's going to be the better choice you also get that bigger screen like I said this is a 13.5 inch screen that's a 12.3 inch screen, so over an inch difference. This is mainstream size. In fact, it's a little bit bigger than your mainstream 13 inch Ultrabook, especially given the 3 by 2 aspect ratio. So it's quite tall, almost more like having a 14 inch laptop in, in terms of screen real estate. So if you, if you like the Service Pro 4, but you say, my eyes are a little old and tired, maybe, or just the kind of work I do, even drawing, I need something of a bigger virtual canvas. Well, again, we have Surface Book for that. Now, it does detach as you know by now. Press a little button on the keyboard, it makes an electromechanical sound, and you can have a 13.5 inch tablet, which is pretty nice. Both of these are high quality pixel sense, as Microsoft calls them, displays that support and come with the same new Surface Pro pen with the eraser on the top. This is 1.6 pounds, so it's actually a little bit lighter, but it is bigger, so it depends on if you're comfortable holding something this size. It's not absolutely humongous, though. And there we have one sitting on top of the other, so you can see the difference in screen size and what you're handling. I think both of them are pretty manageable. I have to say that if tablet users are sitting on the couch and using the pen or, or your use case, then the Surface Pro 4 is going to make more sense. It is still more small and more nimble and maybe a little bit heavier, but 
you know, that's okay. Also, it has ports built in. Not a lot. Tablets don't tend to have a lot of ports, but you do get your USB 3.0 port, your mini display port right there. We have a micro SD card slot on this on the body. Now, with Surface Book, it's a different kind of animal because basically they figure you're going to use it docked to the keyboard if you need ports. That might or might not actually be the case for you, but there's only a headphone jack on this on this section right here. That's all there is. Now you can connect this to the optional $199 Surface Dock. It has the same charging and power connector right down here. So you could use it and get four USB ports, too many display ports, an Ethernet port just with the tablet, which could be very handy for artists. It's a pretty cool way to use it. You're using this to draw on like so, and you have a big external monitor for proofing whatever it is you're working on. Graphically speaking, you've got your Ethernet, you've got USB peripherals, or you want to use it with Xbox Remote Play for Xbox One, you can actually do that with either of these tablets, but you're going to need probably a USB port for the Xbox wired controller. Now the base on this is where, of course, you're going to get more ports than you would on Surface Pro 4 because we have two USB 3.0 ports right here, a full-size SD card slot. And on this side, our mini display port, and that's the same magnetic charging connector slash data connector that is used on Surface Pro 4 and that's used on the tablet section of this. So again, put these two halves together and you've got something more like a laptop. You've also got something that's bigger and heavier. When you put them together, it weighs about three and a half pounds, which is about the same weight as the 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro. It is not what I would call hideously heavy or anything like that. There are plenty of laptops in this size class that do weigh that much, but it is not as light as Surface Pro 4 with the touch keyboard, which weighs 0.68 pounds additional. So you're looking at under two and a half pounds still for the Surface Pro 4 with the keyboard. Now, all is not lost with laptop ability of the Surface Pro 4. People have been doing it. We have the kickstand here, which you won't get on the Surface Book because they figure you use the keyboard base if you want to do that. But for people who use it on their lap, I find that if I'm sitting on the couch or something like that, putting it down at this angle, it's actually very stable on the lap. Some people say, how, how do you use that? I, I don't find it that impossible by any means. The keyboard has also been improved with the latest generation of the type cover. Island style keyboard, really pretty nice to type on. It's backlit. The trackpad is good. Neither are as good as Surface Book, but considering the fact that this is a very novelly designed light kind of keyboard accessory, it actually works pretty well. I, I didn't have that much of an issue with the Surface Pro 3 keyboard even, but this one is quite nice. But like I said, it's not going to live up to something that was designed to have one of the best keyboards and trackpads available on a Windows machine. So basically, right here you get laptop ergonomics and a laptop weight and size to match, and here you get extreme portability. If that's really important to you, then, then Surface Pro 4 would be the better choice. If you just want something that acts and feels like a laptop most of the time, it would be Surface Book. Now, using these solo as a tablet, Surface Pro 4 averages us six and a half hours for battery life. And the entire assembly here for a Surface Book, top and bottom half, and we have the dedicated GPU, so our battery life will probably be a little bit lower than the integrated G GPU option. We've been averaging around 10 hours of battery life for the two together. But if you're talking solo tablet use, say you're somebody who does use a tablet a lot, it's only three hours for just the tablet half by itself. They both have a battery, top and bottom half. You can plug the charger into the bottom of the tablet, so you, you can use it without, you know, totally running out of juice, assuming you are near an outlet. But for those of you who do use it as a tablet a lot and are away from an outlet, clearly this one is meant for short bouts of use in that kind of scenario. Surface Pro 4 will go longer, but as a whole, Surface Book, whole assembly, will last you a lot longer on a charge. In terms of performance, you're looking at almost the same internals, which at first might make it seem irksome that you're paying a lot more for Surface Book, but you're paying for the bigger, higher resolution display on that and the fancy pants design that you got going here with the fulcrum hinge and the muscle wire design that holds it and releases and all that sort of thing and the optional dedicated GPU technology that's inside here. But when it comes to RAM, SSD drives and CPU options, other than the Core M, which is only available on Surface Pro 4 at the low end, these both use the same Core i5 and Core i7 dual core ULV, 6th generation Skylake CPUs, 15 watt CPUs. So you're not getting a smarter CPU by buying the Surface Book. You get the same kind of RAM, you get the same kind of PCIe NVMe 
SSDs in these machines, and they're both available at 128, 256, 512, and one terabyte option. So same storage options are available too. Keep that in mind. Now graphics, that's where there's a difference. Both of these use Intel HD 520 graphics for the Core i5 model. Core M is going to have 515, a little bit lower. But again, comparing the, the Core i5 model here, integrated graphics only for your Surface Pro 4. No dedicated graphics, just no way for them to actually get that dedicated graphics chip and the cooling required into a tablet yet of this size. This one, that's why they have the optional NVIDIA custom GPU in the base. Now, it's no gaming PC, i.e. it's not like an Alienware kind of level gaming card at all, but it's enough to just about double frame rates in some games like Tomb Raider, Bioshock Infinite. It's enough to make GTA 5 playable enjoyably in terms of frame rates at low settings and 720p granted where uh, GTA on the Surface Pro 4 you really got to go to the lowest possible settings and drop the resolution as much as you can you're not going to see the same frame rate so as an occasional gamer even though I think the GPU in this really was designed for people using Adobe products and stuff like that this one's not not a bad stand in you can have some fun with this one Surface Pro 4 is Better fit for casual games, older games, and for those of you who have patience to play more demanding titles at very low settings and low resolutions. It's worth noting that there will be a Core i7 version that will have Intel Iris graphics, not the highest end Iris Pro graphics, and that should help with you know, Pro apps particularly there. You can get a couple of, gee, I don't know, five, eight frames per second improvement in some games on Surface Pro 4 and that happens still won't be up to the level of the GPU that is inside of this which is equivalent to pretty much an NVIDIA 940M but with faster video RAM. How about noise and heat? Well both of these use Microsoft's new hybrid cooling that's more aggressive at keeping the fan noise down. Neither of these is noisy. Doing everyday productivity work right now they are completely silent. You don't hear the fan at all. Does a good job. Designed to also dissipate the heat. Now remember with the Surface Book, the heat's going to be up here, not against your legs, because this is where the CPU, the RAM, the SSD is. Only the optional GPU would be in the base, and that by itself is not going to get all that hot. But they designed it to spread the heat out across the back, and the hot spot will be more towards the center where your hands probably won't reach as you're holding either of these side by side, right? So, a lot better than the Surface Pro 3 era machines in terms of heat and noise, and they're about equal when it comes to how much noise they make and how much heat they generate. Neither of these gets burning hot. If you're doing something like, well, playing Bioshock Infinite on one of them, it'll get pretty toasty. You'll feel it for sure. It's going to be very warm, but it's not going to be burning hot. Your fans, you'll hear the fans. You would with any laptop or Ultrabook, anything other than a big 17 inch gaming rig that has lots of room for cooling and all that sort of thing. You'll hear the fans, not obnoxious, not annoying, not loud, but you'll, you'll hear them, but probably not loud enough that somebody's going to tell you to leave the room. Now let's talk a little bit more about the displays. Both of these are just about equal quality. Our Surface Book measures a bit brighter and a bit higher on contrast. That could be luck of the draw with the display panels. Microsoft claims pretty much the same specs for these so it's hard to say. But then again, we have two different Surface Pros in, and they both measured about the same relative to each other. So perhaps there is a little bit of difference with a little bit more brightness and contrast for the Surface Book. Anyway, slightly higher resolution display because, well, it is bigger here. These are both very high DPI displays, 1.2 inches bigger for the Surface Book. These are both what Microsoft calls Pixel Sense displays. It's a name for their, their nice new displays with the new Intrig 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity digitizer. Bonded Gorilla Glass for reduced reflections. These are both still glossy. You'll see, you know, reflections. I'm trying to make a reflection now. That's why I'm doing that. Not if you're that close, apparently. Anyway, they're both lovely. They're both 267 PPI. I can't really say one is greatly better than the other. Contrast ratio is a little bit higher here. They're showing the same picture. I think you can see that in the building. There is a little bit, well, more contrast. Color saturation looks a little bit higher on the Surface Pro 4. They both come color calibrated from the factory, and they're pretty close to accurate. Our, our Spider 4 Pro colorimeter was able to improve a little bit on that, but both very good out of the box, both good for professional graphics work. Me personally, if I could, I would like to have the bigger display for working on digital photography, editing, that sort of thing. But then again, you know, I like the portability of this little guy and the way it's easy just to take this anywhere. So it really isn't an easy decision. 
When it comes to cameras, they have the same cameras, five megapixel in the front, eight megapixel on the rear, really pretty decent cameras. And both of them use the front camera for Windows Hello, which is facial recognition for logging into Windows that actually does work. They both have TPM security modules inside. Now, interestingly, there is no fingerprint scanner in the Surface Book. Maybe Microsoft thought that corporations, or the biggest consumer probably of fingerprint scanners, weren't going to be buying this so much as independent graphic artists. I have no idea what their thinking was. But anyway, there is no fingerprint scanner here. Now, if you spend $159, you can get the Surface type cover that has a fingerprint scanner embedded right over in this area over here. So for those of you whose companies require it or and you're bringing your own device and your IT department won't let you on the network otherwise or something like that or you just like fingerprint scanners better than Windows Hello facial recognition you're only going to get the fingerprint scanner here. In terms of drawing and writing on these displays both of these have obviously a magnet on the side that's holding the pen on there not enough to trust it if you have it bouncing around in a bag it could see come off but it stays pretty well here. It's a good way to not lose it while you're using the machine. Anyway, you get the same drawing and writing experience. You get the same pen with both these. Same pressure levels, same level of hover distance on here. Same nice and smooth and, and inky kind of feeling in a way. Ink on paper kind of feel when you write on it. So either of these will do equally well for writing and drawing. It's really a matter of which screen size you prefer and if you want the slightly higher resolution in the bigger screen size or this more compact one right there. And let's not forget bugs, because at launch, Surface products always have some. Well, these guys have a lot of hardware in common, so they pretty much share the same bugs, which is mostly Intel 520, HD 520 graphics driver crashes. Sometimes you'll see it crash and reload, reload. Sometimes the screen will go black mysteriously, and hopefully it'll recover. If not, you have to put it to sleep and wake it up. Biggest bug there, hopefully Intel will come out with a driver soon. Microsoft says sometime in November. We are now in November, so keep your fingers crossed sooner rather than later. So either of these, you can see that problem. With the speaker popping, that's a weird little glitch that happens on the Surface Pro 4. I haven't heard the Surface Book do that. And it's just a little quiet pop, pop sound once in a while, particularly if there's video paused on a page or something like that. It's just kind of a weird little thing. That one is not as much of a deal breaker as your display driver crashing, which can certainly interrupt your world just a little bit there. Lastly, they both have stereo speakers hidden right by the sides of the display. Little slits here, little invisible, like ear holes. I don't know what you call them. They're both pretty loud. They're both pretty full. The Surface Book is bigger. It is a little bit louder. They're both pretty nice sounding machines for their size class. They both have dual band Wi-Fi 802.11ac. That's Marvel Avistar Wi-Fi Bluetooth 4.0. So... There's a lot that's the same in terms of the hardware here, really. Again, it comes down to the form factor, your budget, and your screen size preference. So there you have it, Microsoft Surface Book versus Microsoft Surface Pro 4. It's another one of those, no matter what, Microsoft is going to win kind of comparisons, isn't it? It's like when we smacked out MacBook Pros. Anyway, I hope you get the idea right now if the Surface Book Pro is going to be worth the more money to you, or if this little Surface Pro 4 could do the job. Again, it's going to come down to size, whether you need that optional dedicated GPU, and whether you want a laptop first or a tablet first. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our video reviews of each of these products, read our written reviews too, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.